There is nothing wrong, nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. We are controlling transmission. We're back. We're back for another show. That's it. It is 84, and we're talking about balanced builds. We're here in the penthouse with Hunter, and I'm Chris, and we are going to go over everything about balancing a rod during build, how to maybe fix a rod that's maybe got a balance problem, yeah. um, some things to consider. Well, what else you got for yeah, us? Yeah, so we're going to talk about a couple different ways to kind of alleviate the same issue you might be having with a, we'll call it maybe a tip heavy rod, yeah. you know? Um, we're gonna talk about, you know, different ways to do that. One can be, you know, making sure you have proper reel seat placement, right? So you can kind of adjust where your re reel seat falls right. to offset a little bit of that, uh, you know, having a, a heavy tip. Yep. And then, uh, you know, we can, we're also gonna show two different ways, or actually three different ways that yep. you can actually add weight um, to the butt end of your blank to, uh, to help balance it out. So we're going to be showing, uh, you know, a weighted fighting butt. We're going to be showing uh, an aluminum uh, version. Yep. Uh, and then also, um, we're just going to show you a technique to basically just add, you know, like a lead weight or even a tungsten weight into the back end of your blank to uh, get a balanced build. Yeah, kind of how we used to do it back before some of these things were developed. And uh, I actually still do it that way. So, you know, it's, yeah. I, th I think it's a good option. So uh, we're also... You know, people come here for the demos, but we know you stay for the prizes. Of so, um, we've got some some heavy builds or some heavy prizes, I should say. Right? Yeah. Um, we've got a uh, CRB weighted butt and a handle kit. We're gonna do that CRB DCRDS. That's that Gen Two, mm -hmm. the variable speed rod dryer. Yeah. That's been a big hit. Of course, those are in stock. Uh, but you might win one tonight. And then, of course, you're giving away. Well, yeah. you're giving away all of these, right. let's be honest, but you're also, tell them about the grand prize, because yeah, that's a so, pretty good uh, one. Grand prize for tonight, as usual, we're going to do a rod kit. This time it's going to be an MHX rod kit, and we're going to throw in the CRB weighted fighting butt, so you can use that in your build as well. Well, I mean, that works for me. Absolutely. Sweet. What else we got going on? We got some exciting news to yeah. share with everyone, right? Yeah, we've added, we've added a pro team member. So... Um, some of y'all that follow professional bass fishing, I know a lot of I know a lot of y'all do. So we've got Matt Steffen now as part of the Mud Hole Pro Team. So you know he at one point in time he might have been you know like a field Steffen, and now he's a pro Steffen. <laughs> so uh, in all in all seriousness though, we we do like him. He is an absolute great guy to be around. He's been on the FLW tour for 11 years, um, three top tens. Fished 82 events, he's won over a half a million dollars. But the cool thing is, is he lets you into his world a little bit. And, it, and it's great because he's got a YouTube channel. He helps people out. He's not just, you know, wearing a GoPro on his head and fishing. He's actually, you know, uh, walking you through past events he's fished. He's talking about rod repair, talking about rod building. And he's been doing this for years. We did, we did not just send Matt a bunch of stuff and say, hey, we want you to be a rod builder, so be a rod builder. He's, he's really taken to this and he's been doing it for a while. So, I mean, he's got 20,000 plus subscribers on his YouTube and he's got over 400 videos. So there is something in there for everybody. And uh, we're actually gonna go to Junks, Junction City, uh, Wisconsin and say hey to Matt Steffen. Cool. Hey everyone, Matt Steffen here, newest member of the Mud Hole Fishing Team. I'm so excited to be joining the Mudhole MHX and CRB family. You know, I've been using MHX blanks and CRB components, building my own rods since 2015 and using them to compete successfully at the professional level during that entire time span. I truly believe that these rods, my custom built rods, give me an advantage 
over the competition. And that's because I can build a rod to the exact specifications that I demand and that I want. But at the same time, I can build those rods to enhance the action of the baits that I prefer to use. Not all crankbaits, not all chatterbaits, not all spinnerbaits are made the same. So, you know, for me, I've got specific requirements that I want out of the rod to enhance the bait that I prefer to use. And that's a huge advantage for me. As a professional angler, the competition is so stiff that I'm looking for any slight advantage that I can get. And having the ability to build my own rods is something that has really given me a lot more uh, knowledge and experience across the entire fishing you know realm whether it's the bait movement how a bait works how rod you know rods work how you can change action of rods and baits just by moving around the components of on rod blanks it really does make a difference for me as a professional angler and that's the reason i build my own rods i don't know that i could go out and find rods that meet the demands that i expect out of them at, at this point now, I, my plans for this upcoming year really come down to trying to create a bunch of content that's going to help people to see the value in building uh, custom rods. You know, what my plan is, is to produce content that's going to show the rods that I use on a daily basis to build those rods, to provide the actual specs and a component list so that viewers can go out there and build the exact same rod that I'm building down to the exact measurements. And at that point, I'm going to take the rods out on the water, kind of walk you through why I like to use these specific blanks for certain techniques and show you how important it is and why the rods, rods work so well. So I'm really excited for this upcoming year. I'm excited to produce a bunch of content. You know, at this point, I love building rods. So if I can help share some of that enthusiasm to other people and get them involved in building rods, I think that would be great. It's a great skill set to have, and I'm excited to be working with the Mudhole family. So thanks for having me, and stay tuned. We'll be having a bunch of content coming out this year. Got to love it. Got to love it, Matt. Great guy. Yeah, good stuff there from Matt. That's a awesome. Absolutely. Um, so with all of that being said, how about we do a giveaway? Yeah, let's do it. All right, cool. So we're going to get your credit card out, mm -hmm. and what are we going to give them? Well, we're going to do... Um, as we mentioned, we're going to do the CRB uh, fighting butt, right? We're going to do, we're going to throw in a handle kit so you can use it, you know, together. Yep. We're also going to throw in the CRB aluminum fighting butt. Yeah. And um, what else? What else we got up there? I think what we'll do too is, well, here's here's a new thing too. Right before we're going to give this away, let's let's talk about this real quick. We've got a new way for everybody to message us either about the show, about the giveaways, and it's gonna go to live at mudhole.com. We're gonna put up that email address. That's gonna come right to the desk in the penthouse. We're gonna be able to talk about you know, the show, answer questions. That'll also help us get the information for the giveaways. So with that being said, we are going to have, when we do these type of giveaways, and for those that have won in the past, you know, we try to reach out and have a chat with the winners and say like, okay, well, are you doing a spinning rod build? Are you doing this? Or would you like a cork one? Or, you know, so we try our best. We don't just, you know, go in the back and see what we've got more of and just throw you something you might not use. Um, so if you do win any of the giveaways tonight, you know, if it's not something very specific like the DCRDS dryer, if it's something like this, we will have the email address live at mudhole.com. That's how you're going to contact us. That's how you're going to do the info. So, all right, we'll back be... to the giveaway. We're going to give away said, that stuff. So, uh, yes, I'm yeah. sorry I forgot to go over that earlier. Oh, it's all good, all good. We can uh, reiterate that a little bit later in the show as well. All right, so we need our winner for giveaway number one, which again is going to be the CRB weighted butt. We're going to throw in a handle kit and also the aluminum cap itself, the aluminum. Yeah. Um, all right, so what do we got here for giveaway number one? Who's our lucky winner? We got it right here. Coming, coming through hot. We're doing Brian nice. Townsend. All right, Brian. I figured I'd take that one because yeah, it's a, easy, it's a name that name. we can pronounce. Yeah. Fantastic. So right there on the bottom of the screen, you will also see just email the contact info over to live at mudhole.com, and that's how you claim your prize. Excellent. Sweet. All right. Congrats, Brian. Great prize there.
that that'll work. Um, we got a couple people that are kind of chiming in. I like to I like to do a uh, a crowd surfing thing here really quick, and I think this one is very cool because we've got Nathan. Um, he's coming in from Australia. Says he loves the show, and he's coming from Australia. Wow. So very I mean, cool. that works for me. I'm not yeah. sure what time it is there. I don't but, uh... I don't know what time it is nor do I know what day it is <laughs> in Australia. But uh, Nathan, thanks for that, thanks for watching. And I think this is why that, you know, the Mudhole Live Rod Builders Workshop and this show is so important because you get people all over the world kind of connecting there. So um, anyway, that is that and we'll turn that off. See, I'm still learning some of this, but I'm getting there, I'm getting there. All right, now, we need to talk about balancing your rod for the type of fishing that you do. Yeah. So I would say, you know, there is a, um, we'll get to this a little bit later in the show, but there is a myth out there, right? Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get into that later. But I want to start with, you know, I would say you really need to figure out what is this rod going to be used for? And, and in, in a sense, what technique, what, um, you know, for instance, if we're bass fishing, are we going to be throwing a topwater lure with this bait? Are we going to be flipping and pitching? Are we going to be throwing a worm? Because if you think about it, those types of techniques all require a little bit different different angle that your rod is at sure. while you're fishing. You're not just yeah. always throwing it out there, keeping it in the same spot every single time. Right. You're, you know, you might have your rod tip pointed down, it might be up, it might be at the side. So, with that said, we have a, a little graphic. Yeah. That um, that we've come up with. I know you had a, a you know, a lot together and we're doing a you know a, a rod balancing cheat sheet right okay. so we have tried to figure out maybe what uh, you know how do you fish we'll say a drop shot rod okay or you know Jay how would you fish a flipping stick or maybe how Taylor fishes a worm rod things like that so you know we try to sometimes we get on the whiteboard sometimes we get on the deflection graph we like to put a little bit of visuals behind some of the jumbled stuff that comes into my brain and out of this mouth. Mm -hmm. So what we did is I deferred to Jay and Taylor, the guy in the graphics department, we've got this. We got the rod building cheat sheet. So we're looking at one o'clock on a clock talking about shaky head drop shot, right? right? So you're gonna be using maybe a DSA 22. Maybe you're gonna use an NSJ 871 and you're gonna be fishing a drop yeah. shot and a shaky head. Right. Your rod's not gonna be in the water. Oh. We're probably going to be somewhere right there. Yeah, you're going to be at a 1 o'clock, you're going to pitch it out, yeah. and you're going to work the shaky head, mm -hmm. or you're going to work the drop shot. Now, granted, if you're fishing like straight, you know, straight down doing a little video game style, you might not be so vertical, right. but if you ever see anybody out on a lake, most of the time they're throwing a shaky head or a drop shot, they're up at about 1 o'clock. Exactly. Okay, so that takes care of that. We're going to move on. The other one I think that is quite important to have a, a lighter tip rod and this is where we're going to get into the myth thing, sort of. But that's going to be your flipping stick and your worm rod. When we go to 3 o'clock, we're going to have a Carolina rig yeah, or a jig to, rod. More to our side. Because you're going to bomb that yeah. cast out, right? And you might drag that Carolina rig on a shell bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe your rod will be a little bit down, but I would like a really neutrally yeah. balanced rod, right a level the, rod. Yeah. You know, same for a jig rod because you kind of really don't know. You might be flipping a dock, but you might be making a long cast and dragging a shell bar. So that's three o'clock at the Carolina rig slash a jig rod. And of course, moving on, we're gonna go to four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Now four o'clock, you're gonna start throwing things like jerk bait, maybe a frog rod. You're gonna have the rod pointed down. Yeah, a little bit down here. You're gonna work your, uh, what, was the, what was the frog you always like to throw? Was that the? Um, the spro popping yeah, frog. Yeah, the spro popping frog. So now you're gonna walk that frog, mm -hmm. right? Tip's gotta be down. Most of the time your tip's gotta be down, or I know, you like to throw that Vision 110 jerkbait. Mm -hmm. When you're throwing a jerkbait, you're not throwing a jerkbait like this, right. right? Down. Down like that. And of course, this would have a little star next to it. You would also bring in your topwater bait. Yep. You know, your walking bait, things like that, because you're going to fish it down. Even if you're standing on shore, you're still going to walk the bait down. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you're in a boat, you're going to be elevated, so you're going to walk the bait down. Yep. And then of course, finally, at 5 o'clock, we're going to have your cranking rod. We're gonna have your swim bait rod because you're gonna be lobbing a big giant swim bait, um, whether it's 
one of the one of the large jointed ones, whether it's a, a large jig head and a paddle tail type swim bait, and of course your crankbait. I mean, you've even seen guys on the tour they would they would bomb one out there with an eight foot rod and kneel down on the front deck. Yeah. Try to get that rod down as far as you can so you can reach the depth that you're at. So that's kind of the rod balancing cheat sheet. I mean, you got anything there that you that you feel no. like I might have missed the I, mark on? I think on? you cover it there, and of course, I'm sure there there's some people uh, you know that want to debate some of those techniques and where the rod tip is, but this is a general trying to uh, just give you guys a visual of where some of these uh, techniques and where in relation your rod tip is actually pointed at. Sure. And I'm sure there's a lot of people asking, well, why does that even matter? Well, it matters because that's how the rod balances in your hand. Would you want a, you know, a, a jerk bait rod that is that has two ounces in the back of it that your tip's gonna be pointed up all day? No, of course not. No. But for a flipping stick, that's that would be very important because sure. you, you, you know, and obviously there are gonna be some exceptions. Yeah. You gotta account for you know longer rods. Longer rods in general are gonna be more unbalanced because right. they're, they're gonna have more length of graphite, you're gonna yeah. have you got more, more material. guides, more material. For sure. So in general, um, you know, a lot of longer rods will need to be, you know, balanced. Mm -hmm. um, I would much rather, you know, have a rod that is balanced, that weighs an ounce, an ounce or two more, right. than have an unbalanced rod that weighs a lot lighter. I, I couldn't agree more because honestly, we have even had guys that, during testing, right, will go out and we'll be punching mats, you know, you're swinging a one and a half ounce weight on the end of there. You're kind of doing a yo-yo, you're doing this. I had guys that after a couple hours swear that one rod feels and fishes different, claim it's a different rod blank mm -hmm. altogether because one's got a little bit of weight in it and the other one doesn't have any weight in it. Yeah. So I'm gonna, no, 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 I, I'm telling you that rod is different whatever, and it's not. It's just either balanced to that person's liking mm -hmm. or it's maybe not a level balance, but it has the consideration of how you're fishing it. Because I've seen a couple guys in here that have said, you know, oh, well, this is what I like. This is what, you know, maybe on a 10 footer, I like it. You know, Kevin here comes in and he says, answers to somebody, he says, Thomas, I like a heavy tip on a 10 footer. Yeah. I don't even know what you would have to put in the butt of a 10 footer to get it up in the air. Yeah. But if I'm throwing, an eight foot cranking rod, the good news is it's probably going to be a little tip heavy, but I wouldn't consider that a negative. You know, sometimes when somebody says, oh, it's tip heavy, it's kind of like a negative connotation, but it's really not because I'm gonna throw the crankbait as far as I can and the rod's gonna go down and I'm gonna start cranking. It's natural. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not gonna throw a 10 XD like this, reeling it like this, mm -hmm. right? So it's kind of a natural thing. So again, you know, I don't, I don't need any, you know, hate mail over it, but it, it's one of those things that we tried to give you a little bit of stuff to think about. And if you throw, you know, a, a jig a different way or whatever, I mean, I know I throw a swim jig. The swim jig is on the surface. Mm -hmm. So I have a high rod tip. Always. And I'm working it, and that swim jig is barely even getting wet. So that's something I want to light, you know, whereas some guys might be throwing a swim jig or something deeper then they don't want the rod to be balanced that way. So just some things to think about. Yeah. And I think Jay did a great job on the graphic. Just looks cool. And that was a beautiful shot from a drone, by the way. That Very was cool. out actually <laughs> here fishing on the Mudhole Vexus in Lake Toho. So that was a, a beautiful day out there. Cool. Um, all right. So, you know, it's, it's, we need to talk about, you were saying what? Real seat placement, how we're going to do that. Yeah. Let's, let's maybe give some people a starting point because you know, there's sometimes you get guys that come in and go, okay, well, people are saying, you know, like PK Clark, how do you know where to put the real seat handle when balancing a rod? I've seen videos to say, get it where you want it, but how do I know where I want it, if that makes sense? <laughs> and that makes total sense. It definitely does. It, it there, really there's does. There's a lot of, uh, you know, with anything, there's a lot of contradicting points on the internet, right? If, yeah. Face it, right? I even, would say even right here. Yeah, right, <laughs> all the time. Uh, I would say so. When it comes to real seat placement, the number one thing for me is I want my the length of my handle, which is the the butt of my rod, that the you know that measurement from there to the back of the real seat. 
Yes. I want that placement to be as comfortable as possible. Sure. Right? I can always add weight using an aluminum butt cap, using the CRB weighted butt, using lead weights like we'll show later. Yes. I can always do that after the fact. For me, the, the being able to fish comfortably and having a, a good length handle proper to you know, whatever technique I'm going to be using it right. with, that's more important than worrying about trying to balance my entire rod based off of real seat placement. Sure. Now, a lot of people will probably disagree, and that's, that's completely fine. But for me, I can add weight, and, and especially, you know, obviously in the butt section, but mm -hmm. I can always add weight to compensate for an unbalanced rod. For sure. But I can't really compensate for a rod that's uncomfortable to fish with because my handle length is not where it should be. Right. So that's yeah. my take on that's it. A, that's like me trying to fish one of those ACSM reel seats that I don't exactly. like. Exactly. So, all right, so here's a flipping stick. Right? This is an FP937. I'm going to have you hold that. Sure. So this FP937 is something I love to fish. You love to fish it. This is going to be in a new segment a little bit later. When we measure reel seats, we try to go over this a lot because if you look on certain tackle sites, you know, they might give you a length from up here in front of and go, oh, well, it's a 16-inch handle. Okay, well, that, that really doesn't give me a whole lot because the real seats change a lot, right? Maybe you've got a grip out here, and now they're also measuring the foregrip. Okay, now we've got an 18-inch handle. I don't know what that means, all right? Where we measure it is from where the real seat and the grip, they meet. So this is the handle section, okay? So that handle section for me is right at 11. Now, you also have to take into account, depending on what fighting butts you use, there might be a little between you know, this, mm -hmm. uh, the end of the blank, and the, um, the end of the fighting butt, yes. right? So for example, this one is not that long. You just have a little bit of EVA out here on this wind grip. But this one is actually going to be, let me see if I can line it up. This one is actually going to be like offset like that because there is some weight in here. There's weight in this one. So there's weight in the back end, and then the end of the rod blank is going to be like somewhere here in the middle, not way down here on the end. So then you're going to kind of have to adjust it there a little bit. So this one, this weighted butt, is, is one, of, uh, one of Hunter's favorites. I know he goes, uh, he goes nuts for weighted butts. So that is where we're talking on 11 inches right there. And we actually had a question from AP Fishing. What's a typical length from butt for your casting rod? You said it moves around a little bit. I say it moves around a little bit. That's 11 inches for a flipping stick. But if I'm throwing a jerk bait, the rod tips down. Most of the time I'm throwing a jerk bait when it's winter and I hate being cold. So I'm gonna have like thermal underwear, some uh, hand warmer pockets and all that stuff. I don't want an 11 inch handle when I'm trying to work a jerk bait and now it's like, it's all in the hoodie sleeve yep. thing on you know my hand warmer deal. So I'm gonna run like a nine and a half inch a handle on a jerkbait rod. Also, I want the rod to be a little tip heavy. So having some extra rod out in front of that handle is actually going to make it tip a little bit. Yeah. But I'm with you. I would rather the handle be right. And I, you know, if I got to put if I got to put 4 4 ounces in that thing, which that that's a little much. I'm not going to do that. Um, but, you know, if I got to put quite a bit in there, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to fish an uncomfortable, uncomfortable rod. So yep. that's all there is to that. Yep, yep. I completely agree. You know, if you're, if you're worried about balancing, use weight in the butt end of your rod. Don't try to worry about moving your real seat an inch forward, an inch back to compensate for an unbalanced build. Yeah. Um, I think we both agree on that. I so. think so too. Cool. Um, this one real quick. Adam, when, we, when we're talking balance, are we talking with or without the reel? We don't have the reels on here because it's just easier to hold and maneuver around. When we did uh, what we're going to show in a little bit, we had reels on the rods. And I would be very, very careful when you are balancing a rod and you don't have the reel you're going to have. Because yes. I know a few years ago, Abu Garcia came out with like this carbon MGX something like $500 bait casting reel and it weighed nothing. And then I had like a five or six year old Revo SX with a lot of metal components. And I want to say that that reel was twice as heavy as the carbon reel. 
So, whoa, is it gonna change how that rod acts and reacts with weight and all that? So, Adam, always, if you can, mm -hmm. just like with guide spacing on a spinning rod and stuff, try to have that reel that you're gonna use because that's gonna matter. Yep, So absolutely. Yeah. All right, all right. What do you think? What else we got? I think we should uh, give something away. Probably. I think that covers it with. I, th um, I think we're. I think, I think we're we've good. proved our point here. <laughs> I, yeah. We'll, we'll get to <clears throat> options for balancing your build. Do not try to, um, at least in our opinion, don't try to you know place your real seat in a spot that's going to balance your overall rod, because in the end, you know, long run, you're probably going to compensate too much. Yeah. And it's just going to be an uncomfortable rod to fish with. So. For sure. Uh, I'm going to hit Thomas here real quick. Yeah. Um, Thomas, sorry, I'm not even going to butcher your last name. I apologize. Uh, he's coming out of YouTube. Hey, what's the most amount of weight you can use? Um, we're going to go over that in a little bit. I'm going to actually, I got a scale here. Um, I took the, uh, the little gram scale out of Hunter's desk. And uh, hopefully he's not going to miss it uh, because we always need one in here. And I'm going to have to give it back. So we've got... A couple different options. We're going to weigh them. We're going to talk about it. We're going to show like even two ounces, but you're going to be starting pushing the limit on that kind of weight in a bass rod. Yeah. If, if you had some other stuff, you know, like we've got some surf rods here that we'll show you in a minute. You could probably get away with a little heavier on that. But boy, I feel like two ounces is going to start, start be the ceiling there. I agree. Don't I you think so? agree. You okay. Know, you go ahead and two, three, four ounces, unless we're talking a... Maybe like a big musky rod, you know, maybe a big swim bait rod that you're throwing five ounces, eight ounces, you know, something just outrageous. Right. You could probably get by with it, and especially on the longer rods. Um, you know, when I say longer, I mean eight, nine foot. Yes. You know, yeah. Any anything under eight foot that, um, you know, even if it's a big punching rod. Yeah. I'm probably not going to go anything over an ounce and a half, an sure. ounce and a quarter. Two ounces, absolute max. Yeah. Nothing past that. Yeah, absolutely. And then uh, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting this here just in. Steven Sweeney, <laughs> you're, all, you're on vacation with your wife <laughs> in Portugal. Come on, man. Have have one for us while you're over there. <laughs> right. Seriously, hope you're having a great time. We'll see you when you get back. Got to give him a shout out there. Um, all right, we need to give away a DC RDS. We're doing the Gen Two variable speed rod dryer. Um, this thing is quiet. It really is. I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, I love it because for somebody that maybe doesn't have a lot of room mm -hmm. where they're finishing, you can turn it on, barely let it run. And when I mean barely let it run, like you can dial it down. So it's, it's slow when you want to walk away from it and let it dry all night long. Mm -hmm. But it, if you want to cut some really clean edges, what are we running this thing? 45? Is it up is to that 45? I think the range is 10. Okay. Up to 45 RPM, so a good range there. Um, you know, especially for you guys that maybe have a little bit of trouble with getting clean edges with your finish. Yeah. This guy right here. That'd be the one. That's the ticket for sure. And you still have that uh, ability to go down to you know 10 RPM. Um, so that's very cool. And one of the most overlooked features is the wire chuck. This is standard with the Gen 2 DCR, DCRDS. Um, you know, you guys can obviously buy the wire chuck separately for like our standard RDS. Yeah. But with this unit, it comes uh, comes with it. So that's a very helpful little tool there to, to basically, you can use this for anything from a fly rod up to any saltwater rod. You know? Yeah. Um, and I was actually doing a little bit of a repair job on a multi-piece fly rod. I kind of boogered up a guide, you <laughs> yeah. know? And if you can't, string a nine footer all together you can pull the sections apart and mm -hmm. they fit in the jaws perfect in the jaws of finish yep so great right there all right. all right let's do it let's, let's run that thing give it give away one away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think we jumped the gun there there we go all right yeah i know <laughs> we were trying to see you know trying to have you keep up here we go all right hunter let's see if you can pronounce we got, this one. we got Oh boy. If Steve Sweeney wins this, <laughs> it's not happening. Oh, there it is. All right, Aaron Phillips. Very Congratulations. cool. Congratulations. So you're going to win a brand new DC RDS Gen 2. Wonderful. Aaron Phillips. Congratulations. AA Ron coming through. AA Ron coming Phillips. through. Um, 
I'm going to put this one up here real quick. Michael Collier. Hey, Mudhole, what's a nice blank for jigging for walleye? The only reason I'm putting this one up is because I suffered through some frigid temperatures in uh, Green Bay, uh, on the Bay of Green Bay. Okay. And, hey, and uh, we used a number of different rod blanks out of the Elite Pro Series, but we're also in current development with some new ones. I would stay in that Elite Pro Series lineup. I would like anything from a light power with a fast action in it. You can go even to uh, an extra fast with a medium light in it. Something like that. We've got a number of different lengths in there. Stay in that Elite Pro Series, but we are playing with some walleye specific blanks. Um, and I gotta tell you, they, they worked great. And I'm, I'm not a walleye fisherman. It's the first time I've ever been up there, but we did it a number of different ways. Um, I mean, shoot, Jay even caught a northern up there. What was it, like 40 inches or something like that? It was 50. Was it 50? Was it no. Yeah, cool. Uh, I think that was in uh, centimeters, right? So anyway, no, it was, a, it was a big one, actually. We were surprised. It was cool. Um, so yeah, Michael, I think, I think you'll enjoy those for sure. So, awesome. Well, we have a new, we've, we've hinted at this a few times during yeah. the show, just because we're so excited to show you guys. All right, so we have a new segment. This is good. For I like Facebook it. Live. This is going to be the Mud Hole Mud Busters. Mud Busters. Series. So if you guys are familiar with the, the show. Don't say it. You might get fined, right? <laughs> might get in trouble. Uh, anyway, so Mud Busters. So the topic, obviously, the big debate. Um, can we bust the myth that a weighted rod feels heavier and harder to fish with? So we got our guys, Taylor and Matt Hoffma. Mm -hmm. They're on it. They and, are. Uh, they're, bu they're busting myths out there. Gonna... And, and what we did, well, they did it. Put a weight in the butt of the rod mm -hmm. first to see if people could tell which rod's heavier. Right. Because we always hear, and we've heard it before on the show, well, I like my rod to be really light. I want it light, and I want it sensitive, and I got, hey, we got you. But... What happens when you're flipping mats for a couple hours? When you're when you're you know fishing long, long days on the water? Sean Cheney. Someone should ask Chris and Hunter how an unbalanced seven nine flipping rod feels in your wrist after a two day tournament. Yeah, not good. No, not good at all. Not good at all. And that guy is a guy that knows all about all of it. So Sean, you know, if you guys have done anything in customer service, rod building, Sean's always there to help, and he knows good and well. You gotta have it. I don't care if the rod is maybe two ounces heavier overall. So, we're gonna run this video cutaway. Welcome to Mud Hole Mud Busters with Terry Bellinger and Matthew Hoffman. Welcome to Mud Busters. I'm Matt. And I'm Taylor. And we are in the business of solving rod building's biggest myths. What's today's myth? Today's myth is, will adding weight to the end of a flipping stick make a rod feel heavier and make it harder to fish? We'll see. Let's find out. Boys went to work and whipped up two identical rods with only one tricky difference. Two ounce weights and the bottom of blank A. Every great experiment starts with a hypothesis. And it's my hypothesis that nobody will feel a difference between these two rods. What do you think? We'll see. I think I could feel a little something, but we'll see. You're crazy, I don't feel anything. Let's go check. Let's try it out. Which one do you think is heavier? The experiment begins. And the first result? This one feels heavier. This one? Yeah. Stuart picked A. All right, so let's see which one feels more balanced. Well, maybe the balanced rod pulls ahead here. After all, balance is the name of the game, right? That one feels more balanced. This one feels more balanced. He chose me. It's off to a rough start. Two ounces might be enough to feel heavier. But after more data weighs in, Take your time. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna say this one weighs the most. This one weighs the most? Okay. All right. I'd say this one's more balanced. This is more balanced? All right, well, okay. okay. Enough of those guys. Let's go talk to the real rod building expert. All right, let's see which one's heavier first. Or if you think they're the same. 
That one's heavier. That one's heavier? Alright, let's go. We'll balance. More balance. This rod right here. Alright, you pick A. More balance. Now, let's check in with the young gun of the team. Let's see what he has to say. Which rod do you think is heavier holding them straight up? This one. Alright. Now, let's see which one's more balanced. You can hold them one at a time or both at the same time. This one's more balanced. This one. So the myth was, was that adding weight to the fighting butt of your flipping rod would not only make it feel heavier, but it'd make it harder to fish. Turns out it's kind of a toss up. Nobody really could tell the difference in the weight, but when it came to rod balance, 75% picked the correct rod. I don't know about you, but I'd rather fish a balanced rod than an unbalanced rod. So what do you think? Myth busted. Myth busted. All right, pretty good from the guys in the lab coats. That's about as close to a doctor as either one of them will ever look. <laughs> but, you know, I'm not even that close. Yeah, so I do have the handwriting, though. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, so this is what we've, you know, come to find out is we add a little bit of weight, put some reels on there, walked around, got it. So there you go. You know, there was what uh, most people were actually wrong on the fact that they were said which one has actually felt heavier. Most of the people were wrong there. And I want to say 75% was uh, correct on which one felt a little more balanced. Mm -hmm. So 75% of the people polled, you know, that's the, that's the four out of five dentists to prove this rod building message type thing. So um, we like it. It's, it's one of those deals that, you know, try to introduce, talk about weighting your butt in a little bit different way. So. <laughs> Let's talk about how you, Mr. Hunter McKamey, are going to weight your butt. Pick, so let's, pick, pick something here. Oh, you just want to pick one? Just pick one of your favorites. Pick well, one you like. In that case, let's go this guy right here. All right, perfect. So this is pretty straightforward, right? So we have a, this is the CRB aluminum butt cap. Okay. And we got it in five or six colors, yep. all the, uh, the popular favorites, right? So what I like about this one is it is very straightforward and easy to um, you know add to your rod. Yeah. So we got a couple examples right here. I'm gonna pick up this surf rod. So what you'll notice about this handle setup is obviously cork tape, very simple there. We've yeah. got a little plastic hosel, rubber hosel, that leads to our CRB aluminum fiber. So you're butt. saying you can use this on something other than a bass rod? You can. All right. So I think this, we'll weigh it in a second. I think this one weighs in a little bit over an ounce. I'll weigh it. Right? All right. Um, and again, and then once I get that back from Chris, I'll show you guys the inside of it. It's, it's very simple to install. 1.061. Okay. We'll call that right at an ounce, right? Perfect. So the inside of this, very easy. So the ID on this, I'd say, what are we? We're probably close to three quarters of an inch. So how about this guy right here? Huh? Yeah. Eh, more like seven eighths. Okay. So this is going to accommodate basically any blank diameter from any freshwater blank, any yeah. surf blank. The only ones that don't make the cut are probably some stand-up tuna blanks, and you're not going to want to use yeah. this, right? So, so maybe gator glass or yeah, something. Yeah, it's going to you know adapt to any rod blank that you want. Yep. And all you basically have to do is arbor up the end of your rod blank here. Yep. Slide this butt cap on till it fits snug and you're good to go. Yep. Fill it with epoxy as much as you can and that even adds a little more weight. So. Absolutely. So what I would recommend, I'm going to give you a depth on this. Okay. So we're looking at a depth of 18 millimeters or 0.71 on a depth. So what we do not want to do is we do not want to take the half inch tape here, I, so I've got the triple little uh, tape dispenser here. I don't want to use the half inch tape as an arbor because I want to create two arbors. So you don't want to use just this half inch one here and go around it and put it on because what I want is I want two arbors touching the blank and touching the inside of this. It keeps it considerably straighter than when you just have 
this size. So try to use the quarter. I tend to use the quarter for a lot of things like this. And what that'll do is you can to, you know, leave a quarter inch on the on the bottom, add a quarter an inch of a tape, leave a quarter inch in the middle, and add another, you know. So you're kind of in that realm of we got a little bit showing on both sides, a little in the middle. We got about three quarters of depth. You know, you'll probably be okay there, but I would try to pinch those two arbors together instead of using just one big giant arbor there. So, yes, that's your little tape arbor pro tip. Yeah, and that's a great idea. I mean, it does, it definitely makes sense. You know, the more, um, not always getting by with one arbor is always the best solution. Sometimes if you do split them up instead of using the half inch masking tape, use the quarter inch, split it up in two arbors. Yep. And that does, it definitely secures it a little bit better and it's more likely to, to stay on there for the long term. Um, but this right here is what I use on basically all my flipping sticks. Um, you know, you could definitely, you know, some of these FP blanks would probably need a little more weight than just an ounce. Yep. And, you know, that's all well and good. We'll show a little bit later how to, you know, add the, uh, the lead weights. But this guy right here for simplicity and for, you know, right at an ounce of weight, this guy is going to get it done. And also it comes in colors. So, you know, yep. awesome there. Um, the only little downside is, you know, with it being aluminum, you got to watch it, you know, especially in the Florida sun, it does get a little hot sometimes. So just a little, just a little bit. So that it's is, actually not as bad as I thought. No, it's not, it's but, not, but it yeah. can, uh, it can just, get you. just check it sometimes before yeah. you pick it up or grab it by the, uh, <laughs> by the aluminum part. Yes. Um, yeah, Absolutely. That's, that will be my favorite out of the, the three ways that we're going to show. Yep, for sure. Um, so real quick, Kyle, coming out of YouTube, he said, no mullet man tonight? You know, don't worry. We're, we're watching out for you, Kyle. And, you know, it, it might be a good one to end on. Yeah. So so don't don't worry. We, we got you. Um, and then also, Bill, the decal is cool. The decal is cool. I'm, I'm thinking you're talking about the old Mudbusters decal. We might have to... We might have to get some of those printed. Uh, Bill, if you're still watching, why don't you shoot me an email, see if I can't get one off of Taylor's desk and get one your direction. Maybe we'll have to give, you know, we'll have to give away a few decals every show if we use, if we use the Mud Busters. So I kind of like that. Jump in there at live at mudhole.com, email address, Bill, send me that. So, cool. cool. All right, all right. All right. Um, all right, so we're going to do another one. And... This one has been requested a few times. We talk about it here in the shop a lot. This is the CRB. Uh, it's an adjustable one. Hmm? Do you know a part number on this? Who? I did that to you on purpose. You did. Yeah. WBC? I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Now, if Hunter or I cannot answer the part number on air, don't worry, because if you run over to mudhole.com after the show. Don't do it now because you might miss something. Run over to mudhole.com after the show. We have a page with all of these products listed. So you can go and shop them on the website and you're not going to have to scan the whole thing. If you just want to find this weighted butt cap is in there, we've got the grips that are going to match it, some different things like that. So don't worry, it's in there. Um, speaking of the CRB adjustable, this actually unscrews, okay? And it's a little threaded end piece with brass disc weights, right? Now, get my trusty scale out here. One of these brass weights is going to be 0.42 of an ounce, okay? When you buy this uh, butt cap, you're going to get two discs. And then even the, the end here is actually weighted. So back here, and it does also have a flathead screw in the end of it. That's actually gonna allow you to, you know, get in there, tighten it up if you need to tighten it. But you can hand tighten it and it actually does pretty good. So this total piece, just to give you all an idea, is going to weigh in at 1.4 ounces. Now, if two discs are not enough, there are actually room on this threading for a third disc that you can buy if you need to buy an extra one or if maybe you lose some discs some things like that don't worry we do sell these brass weights separately 
Um, for those that are asking about, you know, what grip do we use for this? This is where custom rod building comes in a little bit. Mm -hmm. We went downstairs. I mentioned Sean earlier. Sean and I went to the warehouse. We took a trip. We walked around. And we started fitting parts. So in the past, a lot of guys used this weighted cap and build a grip around it, right? So they're on their lathe. They're turning some cool stuff. They're doing a number of different things. And you can do that if you want to even use, you know, something like just the RG7, you know, one of a, just a seven inch casting grip or an eight inch casting grip. What you can do is just get it and cut the tenon off of it. All right, so you've got your grip, cut the tenon. Now the outer diameters of this grip and the weighted butt back here are actually pretty similar, right? So it's kind of gonna look like that, very similar. What we do say is we measured it and we sell the EVA discs, okay? You wanna drill a hole in those. It takes two EVA discs there to cover that one that we've got. Or if you wanna do a little two-tone vibe, we've got these composite cork ones. It's gonna take three to cover that, all right? So it'll take three there. So what you would do is just like when you're constructing a custom grip, right? You'll bore them out, you'll glue them up, and then you can actually stack it on the back side of this grip you've already got. And then that's how you get a two-tone there, and you use this. Now, with, do we have a blind piece? I don't have a blind piece. Um, hang on one second. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I was gonna show how to put this on, and I totally didn't get it. Um, can you see if there's a blank piece over there? Just uh, take the one that doesn't have a butt. Oh yeah, there. hang on, I'm sorry. You know, I'm new at this. Can that work? Yep, we can pull this one off, because we dry fit them. All right, so what you would do is, thank you anyway, Uncle Phil, appreciate it. So this weighted butt has a sleeve. So what we're gonna do is this piece actually slides over the rod blank, okay? Like that. And you're actually gonna have to arbor this one because this on this flipping stick, you'll just arbor it and you'll glue it. No big deal, right? So if you do not wanna build a grip out of this or out of you know some components, we actually have figured out that there are a few four grips that will fit this guy and they actually look pretty darn good. So we have, if you guys have ever built the spinning uh, handle kit with a thread cover, this is, I don't know what this part number is called. B-G-S-K-E, oof, that might be wrong. I don't know, but I've got it, I've got it on the site. This inner diameter here just so happens to fit this guy and that actually looks pretty good. So you've got your fighting butt and all you have to do is, our, uh, is uh, ream out this end. This slides nicely down the blank. There's plenty of room inside of here for your epoxy. Made it up, you're ready to rock. If you want a composite cork one, and the short one, we can do composite cork too. Actually looks pretty good, not too bad. Gives you a good size fighting butt to grab a hold of when you're making a long cast. If you want a little bit longer one, this is the FGK, I think. I'm, I'm sure Sean is in there helping us out. So if you want a longer one, we got that too. This is for the Fuji thread sleeve. Yep. So again, this is the CRB adjustable weighted butt. Slides over, you just arbor it, glue it up, and it is adjustable weights. So that one is a good one to use. Now, let's talk about how we've done it for a couple years <laughs> and a couple little sneaky tricks. All right, so if you've got a handle like this and you want to use these sharp MHX grips, right? Got a flipping stick here, FP937, and you want the match and win MHX grips. We are going to use a lead weight and we are going to insert it into the butt of this rod. So these are just dry fit. That one didn't have a weight in it. That was the, uh, the control, I guess, control. in the experiment. So if you notice inside of this butt, you got it? Yeah, yeah. So inside of this rod blank, we've Ooh. got a weight here. There we go. All right, cool. 
So in there is what is this guy? It's Bass Pro Shops XPS, and they call it a finesse weight. Not real sure why, because it's one ounces, but the line hole in the center is like super tiny. So it's, you know, it's really good for using for a weighted butt. Now, what we recommend, let me get this guy. Yeah, got it. Make sure I don't knock off our, you know, boom operator up there. So we've got a weight in here. This one, you can use the half, the half inch tape to arbor, right? So you can arbor that up. And what we recommend doing is dry fitting the arbor. And you can see it doesn't, you don't want it to just fall out, but you also don't want it to be in there so hard that you can't get it back out, right? So that's good, okay? When we glue this in, you're gonna take pro paste and you're gonna put a little bit of pro paste in head first before you stick the weight. Then I'll usually take the weight and kinda, kinda do a little scoop there with the pro paste and put it in a little bit, and then we'll pro paste the back end of it, and then we're gonna come in with our fighting butt just like that, okay? And then that slides on. Now, a couple uh, words to the wise here and something to watch out for. When you are putting a weight into the back end of this rod blank, you're effectively sealing that blank off, like airtight. When you try to put this fighting butt on, mm -hmm. you're gonna try to push it on with epoxy and it's gonna wanna fight it back off because of the air pressure. So that's something you have to be careful of. What we do is we will either take and poke a hole in the back here, or we glue the weight in first, let it cure, let it dry, and then if you just use a little bit of epoxy on the fighting butt and not try to stack it in too tight and you just use it on the outside of the rod blank you can twist it on and it won't want to fight it back off so much but if you try to pack the end of the blank just stuff it full with epoxy which you don't need to get wild with it but it does need to be in there that's also why the arbor is important so that if that weight does break loose a little bit it's not going to go shooting down the rod blank so it will obviously the rod blank is tapered forward so if you do have it arbored, it's not going to go forward at all. A little bit of epoxy there, then your fighting butt goes on on the back. Yep. Um, so that's, that's a couple options. Just trust me, don't glue all this up and walk away from it, because if it's on the table, you'll find the fighting butt's on the floor, it's dried, it's just one of those, you know, it's a problem. Okay? If you're going to add weight to an existing rod, maybe you've got, you know, uh, a rod from your local tackle shop. Maybe you've got one at the house that you're like, man, I really like this rod, but it's killing my wrist or my arm or, or something like that all day. If you want to add weight to the back end of it, you can do pretty much what we just said is if you can't access from the top down, you know, try to use, you know, a grip like this and slide it down and use an adjustable weight and things like that. Sometimes you're pinched into only adding weight like this, okay? I would cut the rear fighting butt off. Um, if you don't want to shorten it at all, if you do want it shortened, you can shorten it a little bit and then test fit the weights in there. But what you would do is you can use a finesse weight from Bass Pro Shops like that. You can also just go to your local tackle shop if you don't need a full ounce. Now these do come in you know, different sizes, but lead is soft. Mm -hmm. You can take it and put it on a workbench, put it on a concrete floor, and you can buy an egg sinker from your local tackle shop at a half ounce, a one ounce, and you can hammer it and flatten it down. Not like flat, but like taper it out, right? So once you taper it out, it doesn't need to be perfectly round or anything because you're gonna come in and arbor it. And the arbor is gonna kinda help put it in there and glue it and be done with it. So that's how if you do need to add a little bit of weight to an existing rod, um, or you need to do any repair like that, you know, and you don't have to cut the blank, you can just cut the fighting butt off and, and kind of mix and match like that. The EVA is very easy and it's very forgiving for that because it does stretch, you know, and in most rod builds, you could probably get away with, 
you know, e even if the, the grips are different or they're kind of different color or whatever, you could put a, a black EVA or a black wind grip on the end there and probably most people wouldn't even notice. Yeah. So that's, that's what I would do if I would go that direction. Yep, so, yep. Yep. And then, you know, you can also use tungsten weights, you know, if you wanted you to spend a little bit extra money. I was going to say, if you wanted a $15 rod yeah, balancing yeah, yeah. weight. But if that's what floats your boat, go for it. Yeah. Uh, you know, the only tough thing and the reason why we use these weights is, is solely for the shape. I mean, they, it. they are perfectly shaped. They have this, you know, cylinder shape. They can slide in the back. Yeah. Because um, you're, not gonna, you're not going to take a hammer to a tungsten weight. You're not. That's for no. sure. So you definitely have to make sure that you find, you know, a lot of the tungsten weights, especially if you get to the one ounce plus, they have more of a teardrop shape. So the OD on those is too large to actually fit inside the back for of sure. your rod butt. Um, so again, that's kind of why we use those weights. But if you can find a tungsten weight, um, that has a similar shape or can just fit in the back of your rod blank, yeah. it'll work perfectly. And maybe even use two of them instead of just one. Or yeah. If you can use, you know, two half ounces to get to an ounce, yeah. go for it, by all means. Oh, absolutely. Yep. So I think that's, that should cover it. Yeah. Pretty good. We got a couple of questions here. Let me, let me hit this one, though, because this one's kind of near and dear to me being a fly guy. Uh, oh, BBQ Bob coming out of YouTube. Is there a reason to balance a fly rod? You know, with the fly rod situation, I wouldn't add any weight to any fly rod at, at any time. And you know, it's unique because the reel is so far at the end of the rod, right? Yeah. So if, if it's all the way at the end of the rod, you're gonna have a tough time, you know, trying to counterbalance that weight. And that weight is on the end of that. And of course, I, I have heard you know guys say, oh, well, I don't use that brand of reels because they're too heavy, or I don't use that brand of, of reels because they're too light, or, or whatever. And, and you know there is there is something to be said for that too. But it, it also depends on how often you're casting. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, if you're if you're in a stream and you're just kind of roll casting, you know, you're probably not going to have a ton of, you know, uh, a ton of fatigue there. And then if you're tarpon fishing and you got a giant, you know, heavy bar stock aluminum reel you're not casting that much. So you're kind of just toting that rod around until one of those, yeah. you know, tarpon swims down the line on you and you dump one on him. So it's, I wouldn't worry too much about that per se, um, but I, I get where you're coming from. I do. So that's that. Cool. Well, since we're on the uh, topic of questions. Uh-oh. I hear that we have something called rapid fire Q&A again. I think that's a thing. Yeah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's a thing. I think they, uh, I think they touched it up. I think they improved it a little bit, which is great because they're always doing a little bit more and a little bit better. Plus, y'all, the folks at home and the folks in the war room will appreciate this. They're going to limit us to seven minutes for the rapid fire <laughs> Q&A. So, um, Jay, are you ready to shock and awe us with this uh, <laughs> with this new graphic? <laughs> We're going to do, uh, yeah, are you ready? Let's do it. Rapid right. fire Q&A. It's time for rapid fire Q&A. Rapid Fire Q&A. There it is. I think the tablet's actually too hot to hold <laughs> with this Rapid Fire Q&A. All righty. Um, so I guess I just have to pick one, right? Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about this one, Hunter? What do you consider a longer rod? 7.6? That's Don. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I would say a longer rod for me is probably, I think it's a great, great starting point. 7.6 or longer. When I, you know, most flipping sticks I have are, are seven nine. Yeah. And that would be longest rod that I would have in the boat. I, I would have to agree with you there. You know, seven six, I would consider it to be a longer rod. I really like fishing. Like seven threes and seven twos is about my limit there, but when in a casting rod. Then once I get to a flipping stick, it's like seven, seven, nine, and eight footer. All right, cool. Thank you for that. How about uh um, Philip, is there a way to add weight after the build? Which one do you prefer? Um, Add one after the build. After the build, well, that's going to require you to probably remove a fighting butt or yep. cut it off. And if that's the case, I would probably opt for just the lead weight option. Lead weight option. Yep. I think I'm going to agree with you on that one. Wow. I know. I know. How about Dan Davidson's got a handle length for kayak fishing? Oh, that's tough. I uh, can't personally say I've done a lot of kayak fishing. Personally, I would keep it pretty short. Um, let's just say it's a seven foot rod. I would probably go nine. Yeah. 
nine inches. And I, I mean, I have long arms, yeah. um, nine, nine and a quarter. But you know, for, for the kayak thing, for me and trying to like manage the paddle and sit down and, and do that things, I, I'm gonna err on a shorter one as well. Shorter. So it, it definitely, you might even want to consider going to a 6'6". It might be a little easier to handle. As you drop down that handle length, if you start to get too short, I think a seven footer or something like a seven six with too short of a handle is gonna get a little awkward. Yep. So, cool. Um, how about this one, Steven? Do the kinds of guides matter in a balanced build? Um, yeah, but, uh, so I'll say this for all components. I, I would never rely on trying to balance my rod by choosing my components. Okay. Um, I'm gonna choose, you know, We'll say uh, you know a nice set of CRB LZR guides. I'm going to use my MHX wind grips. I'm going to use components that I know and that I like and trust. And then again, I'm going to use um, my aluminum you know weighted butt. I'm going to use the lead weight to then balance if needed. I'm not balancing every rod either. I'm balancing maybe my 79 flipping sticks, maybe my FP885 that I flip grass or you know flip docks with, or or frog rod. Um, I don't typically balance my, you know, we'll say workhorse, seven, three, seven foot, medium, me medium heavies, even heavies. Yeah. I don't balance those. Um, so, so definitely don't think it's like an all inclusive, I'm going to go out there and balance all my rods. It's really only a handful. Um, and with that, I, I don't really choose components based on trying to balance my build. I think, I think that's, that's good. I'm with you on that too. If I want very specific components. I'm choosing those components. Then I'm going to worry about how to balance this thing after. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go, oh, you know. And for me, I'm going to try to do the lot more, you know, lighter components within reason, you know, rather than because we know that with with guide rings, something like you know an older school style guide ring is going to be much heavier, not because of the frame, but because of the ring. That's why things like the SSR and the LZR rings are so good because the rings are so thin, yeah. not because of the frame is titanium or something like that. Um, man, I just had one. Where are we at? How about this? This is not a question, but Edward, I got to give this one to you. Edward says tungsten powder mixed into epoxy will fill any shape. Wow, that's a great option. And Edward, yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for that, because that is a thing. And uh, yeah, yeah I mean, idea. I want to even say that there is some, I want to say that there's like some tungsten fly fishing weighted putty mm. that you could even do it, you know, because guys, instead of using like lead shot for indicator fishing and things like that, there's even like tungsten putty now. So you can probably get some tungsten putty, roll it up and, Good and idea. do that. Yep. Um, let's see. Let's see. Doug, I'm building two 6'6 light trout rods. Is there a standard length from butt to reel seat? Doug, what I'm going to do when I start with a really small and lightweight, I'm going to buy the reel I want, I'm going to get the blank I want, and then I'm going to try to dry fit and lay out. So depending on what type of handle length you want, you can even go, and the reason I mention this, you can even go to a Tennessee handle style. Because if you're using something like a 6.6 six light trout rod, you also have the ability to move that mm -hmm. handle length. Um, if it's 6.6 six for me, I'm probably not going to worry about the fact that it is a light trout rod. I'm just going to use, in my brain, okay, I'm going to use a 1,000 size reel. I'm probably going to stay in that like six, six and a half to seven inch spinning handle length, and that's where I'm going to stay. Because for me, if I'm fighting bigger fish, but I'm using a 7 or a 7.6 seven, in saltwater, I'm probably going to use an 8 or a 9 inch handle. So I don't want something too small because it'll be kind of weird, but you know, unless it's very specialized, like you're hiking in a short mountain stream or something, right? I yeah. mean, you know, I, I completely agree. And the Tennessee handle idea is, is perfect because that is one, probably the only handle setup that you can really adjust um, after the rod is completed. So yeah, great idea. Cool. Um, how about we call it good at that? I think that's pretty solid. Pretty, pretty solid. Cool. So we, we, we beat the clock there with a minute to spare. I think everybody will appreciate that.
I have one thing we need to hit on that okay. we really, really haven't talked about. Well, so, you got 54 seconds left. So all right, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. So when you guys do add weight to your rod, make sure it's always, always, always at the very butt end of the rod. Don't try to add weight in the reel seat area or the grip area or in the split grip. Always, always down at the end. Yeah. Very, very end. Not the tip, not the mid, like yeah. at the end. Because if you go adding weight in the midsection and on the tip, you're gonna get adverse effects. You're gonna start hurting your sensitivity. You're, you're, it's gonna throw your balance off, obviously. Yeah. So always add weight at the farthest point back in the yep. butt section. And actually, I think too, in terms of that, I'll give a shout out to Lance at Swampland. He mentioned the farther back you add that weight. So rather than even adding it inside, if you use an external weighted butt, that will even allow you to lose a little but less weight because you're pushing it back and we're done. <laughs> Uncle Phil's back there dancing around <laughs> saying, that's it boys, that is it. So, all right, giveaway three time. What you Let's got for us now? What are we doing? Oh, we we're doing like doing a MHX. MHX rod kit and a CRB weighted butt. And that's a great prize by the way. Yeah, right? All right, first place grand prize winner. <sighs> Let's see who we can come up with this time. Let's see what we got. Who's going to be the lucky winner? MHX Rod Kit and the weighted, weighted butt. And uh, Nathan. Nathan. He's from Australia. That's the one. Perfect. Yeah, I think. That's the one we talked about earlier. Yeah. Wow. All right. Cool. That is fantastic. Coming to you all the way in Australia. We're going to send it out. MHX rod kit and a CRB weighted butt. So Nathan, if you've already gone to sleep, if we've lost you, <laughs> and it's or I don't know, maybe you're eating breakfast. Uh, again, and to all of the winners, we need to do live at mudhole.com. Uh, that will get our information, or no, that will get your information to us. So that first giveaway was Brian Townsend, mm -hmm. right? Then we had Aaron Phillips come in on that second giveaway, and then of course the grand prize was uh, Nathan out of Australia. So, live at mudhole.com is what we need there. Um, do we have anything else? We do need, we're at 19,500 and some change on the Mudhole Lives Rod Builders Workshop. Oh, very close to 20,000. So getting, getting close to 20, and when we hit 20, I can promise you I am gonna melt Hunter's <laughs> credit card. So let's get, get your friends, call your mom, call your dad, call everybody, anybody you can think. Uh, let's get to 20K by next show, which the next show is March 22nd. That's gonna be flawless diamond wraps. So we're gonna do, try to do some cool stuff for that one. So we'll, you know, March 22nd will be that. But before March 22nd, there it is. That'll be episode 85. 85. I'm telling you, that's good. That is good. Flawless diamond wraps. Now, we need to talk about the photo contest. Yeah. So the photo contest is still going on until March 15th, and then that's when all of the entries will stop, and then we will vote on them, then we'll turn them over to the Rod Builders Workshop. Y'all vote on them. And of course, that topic is found objects. Stuff like, you know, antlers and snakeskin, coin, coins, you know. Different things like that, you know, maybe you found a seashell on the beach or, or something like that. So cool stuff, put it in there. Uh, it's got to be on an MHX or CRB rod blank. But outside of that, go wild. You have to hashtag build to, the number two, win. Build to win, hashtag when you post it in the group. That's how we're going to find it. If it's not hashtag, we can't find it. <laughs> um, so we talked about the giveaway winners. We talked about balancing a rod build. We Got a nice, uh, nice clip there from uh, from our new pro Stefan. So, good, good seeing him for sure. Um, and of course, we've got over 300 people watching and waiting. They've waited for an hour and 10 minutes. I think it's probably time that we're going to close it out with our monthly message from our TikTok extraordinaire Jake Hutchinson with the Mullet Minute. Guys, thank you so much for watching. The show, uh, we had the guys in the war room. I know Sean Chaney was in there downstairs helping everybody out. 
Uh, we even had Steve tuning in from Portugal, so <laughs> congratulations on that. But the guys in the war room, and of course, Jay's on the ones and twos. We had Uncle Phil on the Zoom cam chasing us around all night. Hunter McCamey, my left-hand man, as always. Guys, I'm Chris Adams. Thank you so much. This was episode 84, Balanced Builds, and we're going to leave you with Jake Hutchinson and the Mullet Minute. Thanks for watching. Good night. Welcome to the Mullet Minute with Jake Hutchison. I am Jake Hutchison. Before we begin today, I would like to say a very special thank you to our 69,000 TikTok followers we hit it this week. Without TikTok, we wouldn't have this show, so thank you guys. On to current events. If y'all thought a tiger wrap on an ice rod was crazy, check this out. Terry Erickson from the Mudhole Rod Builders Facebook group just posted a video of a tiger wrap on a locking nut on top of a real seat. What are they going to put a tiger wrap on next? A tiger wrap? Rick Payne from the Mudhole Facebook group brings us these incredible tailing redfish inlaid grips. These must have taken a painfully long time to make. But Rick, where's the rest of the rod? We found this photo floating around the group of John Sucken holding a fat trout. If you look closely at the background, it sort of looks like one of my local spots after I posted an Instagram picture. In a new segment that we like to call, Take a trip with us as we watch Redfish Jesse cut off his metallic thread in one satisfying cut. Let's cut it to Italy, where Martina Marsiglia adds a little style to her wedding walkout. I don't know about the folks at home, but over here at Mudhole, we think Martina reeled on a keeper. On the flight back from Italy, we stopped by Cuba, where Gilbert Rodriguez took us in his shop and showed us this Cuban cigar rod he made. Pretty incredible. He incorporated the leaf of a cigar into a decorative wrap. Gilbert, smoke them if you got them. Now let's kick it to our friends of the NURBS group, where Bill Thompson brings us this modified Southwest blanket pattern. That kind of sounds like my Chipotle order. Delicious wrap, Bill. And it's straight out of the decorative wraps by Billy Vavona book, available on Mudhole.com today. Last but not least, we have a little laminated luxury off the lathe from Michael Ward. Hey Mike, I feel like I'm falling into this thing. Whoa! And now for everybody's favorite segment, the Mudhole TikTok of the month. And the winner is... The Mudhole Flip-Off with Terry Scroggins versus Jay Hutchison. Let's see what happens. Mudhole Flip-Off, part two with Terry Scroggins. Terry versus Jay. Three rounds of three, two wins. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use an MHX FP937, flip it from here, into this cup, and the Dude, cup is. Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is like literally. We ain't flipping off like ten feet right here. We're going by. We we're going. We're going to create a little distance, okay? Round one. Ten points. Ten again. <laughs> you just gave the blue. Zero. Huh? Zero. That's twenty points for Jake. After round one, Jake 20, Terry 10. Oh, if you want to see who wins, you'll have to follow us on TikTok, at Mudhole Tackle. This has been the Mullet Minute with Jake Hutchison. I am Jake Hutchison. Thank you.